Well, hello. My name is Mr. Olson, as I'm going to be called in this video series, because this video series is pretty much being made for my students at my junior high school. So I'm going to refer to myself as Mr. Olson. This particular series that I'm going to make is going to be used to teach how to use a program called SketchUp for Schools. Now, I have not really used SketchUp for Schools, but I've been using SketchUp Make and SketchUp Pro for over a decade and I'm going to navigate the differences and discuss the differences and I will incorporate I will discuss SketchUp Pro and as well as SketchUp Make uh, as I talk about SketchUp for Schools. Um, to start out with SketchUp for Schools is online. SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Make are downloadable programs that work from your computers so that's part of why I'm doing this because SketchUp for Schools is right down here. It's easily accessible by all my students. And very significantly, it is something that can be used using a Chromebook. And that's a major reason why I'm making the change because it's easy for me to get a hold of a set of Chromebooks for my students. It's not easy for me to get a hold of a set of laptops for my students. So I'm going to, moving forward, be working with SketchUp for Schools instead. I'm going to use all the knowledge that I have built up from SketchUp Make and SketchUp Pro to uh, guide you through the process of using SketchUp Make. Okay, so as you can see, I went into, I went to here, I went to my waffle, I'm, I'm logged in under my own account, went down here and found a SketchUp for Schools, and I've landed on SketchUp for Schools. The first thing that I have my students learn, the first thing I'm gonna teach you today about using this program called SketchUp, <sighs> is I'm going to take a moment to kind of show you what it is we're talking about here. Let's uh, let's create new, and I'm going to create using decimal inches, which is different than I used to do. I can double click. Yeah, that'll take me in here. I'll delete the woman here. I'm going to create something that my I make with my woodworking students. I'm just kind of giving you a general idea of what it is we're talking about here, what this program can do why we use this program or why I use this program quite a bit and I've been using it for years now to design things that I make in class. I'm going to start out by navigating through these things. I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to give it dimensions and those dimensions are going to be 5 by 15. And once again I'm going to tell you that I have never used this program before, not this version of it. So I'm going to, it's going to take a moment for me to uh, find my way here. I'm going to pull that up. It's kind of interesting to be starting a video having not actually ever used the program before. I'm looking for this tape measure right here. Three quarters of an inch. I'm also going to go three quarters of an inch this way. Now you shouldn't be following along with me right now because, and if you're thinking, oh my gosh, he's not explaining anything. You're right, I'm not explaining anything right now, but I will be through the purpose through the through these videos, I will explain everything I'm doing. What I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to give you an idea of big picture. What is it we're trying what is this program for? What's the purpose of this thing? Why would I bother learning this in the first place? So I'm choosing to take this opportunity to kind of walk you through what my students do in my woodshop class. Now I am at this point kind of hoping that it, it basically acts the same as SketchUp Make and SketchUp Pro, which it seems to be at the moment. At the moment, everything seems to be pretty easy, easier than I expected it to be to find. Um, that was three eighths. Uh, five and one eighth. This is actually something I'm wondering because I did put uh, inches decimals decimal inches, but I'm going to type in a fraction and see if it works. And it looks like it did. I'm going to check that real quick. So that means that even if you type in, oop, yeah, 5.5, that's what it's supposed to be. It's showing it in decimal inches, but it allowed me to type in the fraction, which I'm happy about. Because I was worried that I was going to have to type in decimals, but it doesn't turn out look, look like I did. I'm going to go ahead and grab the tape measure again. Once again, you're not supposed to follow along. Please don't follow along. That is just going to make, because you're going to you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I can never follow along with this guy. He goes way too fast. But you're not supposed to be following along right now. You're just supposed to be kind of going, ooh, 
I understand. I get what this thing is for. Now, circles should be on here somewhere. I'm going to guess it's in here. And there it is. Three, uh, actually seven. This should be seven. Uh, 30 seconds because it's actually the radius. Seven slash. Actually, I'm going to not bother with those. I'm going to not do that either. I'm going to simplify my bookshelf a little bit, a little simpler than what, because you guys don't want to spend forever watching me do this. So I'm going to make the shelf a little simpler than it actually is in my classroom, because in my classroom we use, um, oh, it's a circle. It's now changed to circle. Okay, so that used to be a rectangle. Now it's a circle, so it stays on the mo on the last thing that I used it for. Um, you guys aren't here to, to see exactly how I build my bookshelves. I'm just kind of showing you. Okay, here we go. Well, I'll show you the rest of it. Uh, this is where I would usually edit, delete guides. And they don't have an edit sign here. So I'm not sure how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore that for right now. Going to learn that one soon enough. That's that. I need to come up this way. Half an inch. I'm going to come this way, half an inch. I'm going to go this way, half an inch. That did not work. That one did. So this is working remarkably like the last program, which is nice. So I don't expect to have as much trouble as I imagine. And I do have students who in the past have used this because it was easier for them to access. That is not correct. I'm supposed to go down towards this in the blue line. Something's wrong. Oh, that line is wrong. Control Z. That was the mistake I made. Ooh, that one's wrong too. Control Z. This one needs to go that way. One inch. This needs to go up to about there and then down. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm going to be cutting out a letter A in my bookshelf here. This is serving also for students who take in a woodshop class to kind of, they'll have a reference of, there we go. Now I really want to edit delete guides. Maybe here. Home, new, open, center, open, import. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm going to find that one later. Sooner or later, I'm going to figure out how to delete those guides. I could erase them. There's going to be an eraser here. There's an eraser. I could erase them all. But that's not really the way. Usually, it's much easier for me to do. Anyways, so there is a bookshelf as created in SketchUp. Now, if this works exactly the same, if I hold the shift key, oops, control Z, I'm going to right click, edit group, and I hold the shift key, it's going to, it didn't delete that, it softened it, so it is working pretty well. Anyways, so here we go. That's what the program is for. That's what we're kind of being able to do. It's a program for us to be able to create objects three-dimensionally in an accurate manner so that we can design them. We can potentially design them. This is something that obviously could be created in my classroom these three pieces and you can see exactly how they go together and I can have my students create these things and ahead of time and then once they've designed all we have to do is cut out all the pieces and redo them now let's move on I'm gonna control Z all the way back to the beginning and we have a brand new file all right the first lesson it's gonna be pretty simple but it's ridiculously important that you understand some certain things so the first thing I'm gonna want you to do is to learn how to use this tool right here, which is the line tool. If you click on that, you have a couple different lines. I've never used the freehand tool. I don't find it useful. I can't imagine using a mouse to draw accurately a freehand line. So I pretty much only use that tool right there when it comes to the lines in this particular project. Oof. Okay, so if I click on any random spot, which I just did, and I move, it's going to want to lock in, in one of three different directions. You'll see this is the blue direction. 
which is basically like the up and down axis or the z axis is the is the common way of thinking about that we think of this as being the y axis and this being the z the x axis and this being the z axis but <clears throat> the line this line tool here will lock in those very specific spots so if i go blue and i go green i know this is a 90 degree angle cuz i went up and i turn and i made a right turn and that that is parallel to this green axis so if I stay blue, green, blue, green at all times, then I and I stay blue and green. I know they're all 90 degree angles. Now it's this last one that all of a sudden, oops, that's not a 90 degree angle. That's not a 90 degree angle, and that's not a 90 degree angle there. That's this is this this is square. All these lines are square, except for these bottom two. So there's two lessons to be learned in this particular lesson there's two things that you need to learn in this lesson one is how to stay in these 90 degree angles and follow the the lines by staying blue and green you stay in this in this uh what's called a plane and i'll talk about that in a moment but they stay 90 degree angles they're not random they're, they're straight second of all the second thing for you to learn <clears throat> is how to do what i'm about to do here which is i'm going to take this i'm going to hover there for a few seconds one two i think two seconds is enough and i'm going to come down and just like right there you can see that it's a green line but there's a little dotted blue line there that tells me that i am perfectly lined up with that above and just like that i have created these are all 90 degree angles boom 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 these these ones are 90 because i immediately turned i went up and then y up or down then y down y down and then Y over here, to, and I lined up with that, and I created all 90 degree angles, okay? Second thing, I'm gonna do it again over here. I'm gonna go blue, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. I wanna show you what happens if I, if I don't have a blue. It looks like that, and I want you to notice that it looks fairly straight. If I move it like that, it looks straight. But the reality, it's gone way over there. So here I needed to stay blue, red, blue. And then to line up that last one, I'm gonna come over here and come up here and here. Now, do you see how that changed from being see-through to having a solid surface? That tells you it's, called, it's what's called planar. Planar means that all of these lines are on a single flat surface. You might think of it as like a piece of paper. They're all on a flat surface. And if I rotate this around, I can make the whole thing disappear. Okay? If I were to, say, to make this not planar, which might actually be difficult to do. Let's see if I can make this non-planar. There we go. This is not planar. And by the way, you'll see how this, this didn't want to end, right? It, it's still stuck there because it, it wants to do something else. And the reason for that is it's not planar. It's, a, it's, it's got these weird lines that are kind of going out there, okay? So in order to make a surface that we're going to be able to do anything, we need to make it planar. I'm going to pause here, going to come up here, go there, there, and it changed to that surface. I'm going to do one more down here at the bottom. Boom. This is all red, green. Red. Did I make a mistake there? No, it doesn't look like it. See, that looks like it's going in the right direction, but it's blue. So if I click there, you'll see this actually went up. If I hover here, come across to... Oh, it's too... Uh, there. And then I can erase that. Okay, that is the first lesson that I have for you today. Is I want you to practice being able to create these surfaces here. These coplanar surfaces. And spend a few minutes kind of figuring this out and making sure that you're able to not only know how know where you're going because of the color of the line. This is green, which means it's going it's parallel to that. This is blue, which means it's parallel to that, or it's red, which means it's parallel to that. Learn how to, to, 
to make these things direct uh, in, go in the right directions. Step one. Step two is you've got to learn how to make them make that final 90 degree angle so that everything is a 90 degree angle. All right, that's your first lesson. Don't want to be too tiring with this. Hope I didn't chase you off. Go ahead if you, if, uh, if you feel chased off, maybe just give it one more lesson and see whether or not it makes a difference. All right, thanks guys. All right, as promised, I need to talk about SketchUp Make and SketchUp Pro, which are other versions of SketchUp and uh, how they relate to SketchUp for schools. Uh, it occurs to me that I need to make sure that I include information on how this kind of looks on SketchUp Make versus SketchUp Pro as well because I found out that SketchUp for Schools is not exactly free. It's free if you have access to Google's G Suite through your school, which my school currently does, but I have no idea whether or not next year that's going to change or not. So I'm going to, plus I have other people maybe watching this video that don't have access to SketchUp for Schools, so I'm going to make sure to have a section at the end of each of these videos where it talks about what it is, what I demonstrated in the video looks like in SketchUp Make. Now SketchUp Make is kind of the free version that used to show up on, um, that I used to use for the first you know, six or seven years that I was using SketchUp. I was using SketchUp Make because it was free, easy to download, worked on all my computers, it was great. Uh, at some point, I started working with 3D printers and laser cutters and, and vinyl cutters and so forth. And I needed files from SketchUp that I couldn't get. Because SketchUp Make won't export PDFs or STLs or OBJ files and things that I need. And so Make, SketchUp Make became a problem. I contacted SketchUp. SketchUp has been giving me uh, pro licenses for my students to use during school. Uh, that expire every six months or so, but it's been not a problem up until now. Now they're telling me that they're no longer doing the, uh, they're no longer giving uh, pro licenses for students uh, because of SketchUp for Schools, but SketchUp for Schools, of course, is not free. So I'm going to take a moment to, um, I'm going to go to Google here, and I'm going to go, I'm going to type in Sketch Up Make. And I'm going to write the word download. And it's going to take me, and I'm going to find down here where I typically go is download.cnet.com is where I send people. That's where I end up going whenever I make a video like this. And you'll find you can download the program right there. And it'll put an executable file on your desktop for you to click on. This is uh, an older file, but it uh, it runs on Mac. You can get the, uh, the, uh, you can get the Mac or the PC version. I have the PC version. Um, and it works very much like SketchUp Pro. I'm not even sure what the differences are, except that you can't export certain files. So uh, I'm going to show you that right now. When I click down here, this is what SketchUp Make looks like. It offers you to try the Pro trial for a period of time. So you can, you can, if you wanted, if you just wanted to use something quickly, you could download the free Pro trial for a month, I think, and then get export your files at that point. But I'm going to. Ignore this altogether. I'm not even going to touch that. I'm just going to go to Choose Template. And I'm going to choose Woodworking Inches, as I always do. And I'm going to start using SketchUp. And it's going to take me to... Hopefully. It's going to take me rather slowly to this version of SketchUp here. Now, this version of SketchUp, I want to point out that this, this, this tool set over here did not show up the first time I, I opened this. You have to go to View Toolbars and choose the large tool set as opposed to the getting started tool set which you have so i'm going to deselect the getting started and do the large tool set and as per the for the last uh, demonstration the first demonstration all we're doing is the uh, line tool so that's once again green red green red and so forth and you're basically able to do the same thing we did in the last now something i didn't cover in the last video or the earlier in this video because i'm actually re-editing the video i made last night is the fact that I can zoom in and zoom out and I can orbit and I can do what's called panning all from a three wheel from a scroll wheel mouse right here so you don't have to click on these buttons ever down here these three buttons to uh, zoom in you just basically scroll in on your on your uh, scroll wheel mouse 
and it will zoom in exactly where you want it, which is really nice. Because if you're using this thing over here, it does not zoom in any specific location. It zooms where it, it zooms fairly randomly. Okay, uh, that's this one. Pan orbit. I'm going to grab this line tool again. Orbit is basically if I push down on the scroll wheel mouse, it allows me to rotate around and take a look at it where from wherever I want. And then to pan, I hold the shift key down while orbiting, while, while pushing down on the scroll wheel mouse to pan. So that's how you get around those three things. So if I wanted to, I could easily do a blue, green, blue, green, come over here and come across, blue, green, could sweep over here and do a blue, red, blue, red, and so forth until I line everything up and boom. Just like on the last one, I can do this on SketchUp Make as well. All right.